grab a pool noodle and a hula hoop for this front porch decoration. I'm gonna use a utility knife to slice the pool noodle vertically. This is gonna allow me to open up the pool noodle and slip it around the hula hoop. I'm gonna need about one and a half noodles to cover this hula hoop. Now I'm gonna grab some duct tape and just secure the pieces together. Since this is bright blue, I don't want it to show through my greenery. So I'm gonna grab some burlap ribbon and just wrap it around the pool noodle. I can use a little bit of hot glue as I go, but this should hold up pretty well. Now that this is all covered in burlap, I've got these little pockets created. This is gonna help me place some greenery on here nice and easy. I have these big stems that look like eucalyptus leaves, and I can tuck these into the folds of the burlap until I have the whole wreath covered. Now I'm just gonna grab some floral wire and secure this. Since it's going to be on my front porch, I want this to be nice and secure. For a little ambiance, I'm going to wrap some fairy lights all around and intertwine them within the leaves. I've got a plastic planter that's filled with some rocks on the bottom. I'm gonna put a paint stick in here just to kind of hold it up a little bit. So I'm gonna use a few zip ties to secure the wreath that I just made to the planter. I'm just gonna add a little bit of burlap to the planter to cover up the openings and I can go place this out on my porch. It looks great during the day and I have this beautiful glow from the fairy lights at night. I hope this inspired you to grab a pool noodle and a hula hoop and make this topiary for your front porch. Next time you're at the garden center, make sure you grab a tomato cage and copy this idea for your front porch. So to begin my project, I took the prongs of the tomato cage and I attached them together at the end using a zip tie, making sure that I pulled the zip tie nice and tight so that it doesn't slip down the prongs of the tomato cage. You can use wire as well, but I do find that it slips so a zip tie holds nice and tight. Then I'm going to take some greenery that I have on hand here. This is a long greenery garland and I'm going to begin wrapping it around the tomato cage, tying it on intermittently with zip ties, making sure that it holds in place. And again, you can use floral wire if you want, but I find the zip ties just hold a lot better. So I'm going to keep layering on my greenery, working around, making sure not to tie it too tight so that the greenery stays nice and fluffy and goes around the tomato cage nicely. So I just keep working it around. Now this garland that I have here has nice pieces that branch out so I can actually work it around. And then when I get to the top, I just keep tying it around until I'm finished. I'm going to work on some fairy lights here around as well. These are battery operated. And then I'm going to take a old rusty planter that I have that needs a little bit of a makeover. So I'm just going to spray it with some primer and then as well I'm going to spray it with a nice almond color spray paint that I had on hand. I'm going to place it on my porch here, fill it with rocks to add some weight and then I'm going to put my tomato cage upside down and here I have a beautiful topiary for my front porch. And at night when the fairy lights turn on, they're on a timer, they light up and I add some beautiful ambiance to my porch perfect for summertime. Time to break out of jail. That is the Walmart ball jail. You also need some green reindeer moss. Start by spray painting the Walmart ball with moss green spray paint. The exact shade really doesn't matter. In fact, I used two different spray paints I already had in two different shades of green. Find a large bowl and fill it with all of your green moss. Separate the large pieces and stretch out any chunks that are thick. I recommend wearing a glove on one hand as this can get a little messy. With a can of general spray adhesive, spritz a small portion of the ball with the adhesive. Take a small patch of green moss and press it onto the ball in the sticky area. Press and hold for a few seconds to make sure it sticks. Continue to spray the ball and attach the green moss to the outside. I found it works best if you work in small areas to spray and then spread the moss into thin layers. When I tried to add thick moss, it fell off after a bit because of its weight. Once you cover the entire ball with spray adhesive and moss, give the entire moss covered ball an overall coat of the spray adhesive. It's just like using hairspray on a head of hair. Style it in a woven basket for a textured boho look. 
or place in a low colored glass bowl for a more modern look. And for a traditional look, a large ceramic pot is perfect for this moss covered ball. I have a blank wall in my garden that needed some attention. I went to the store and grabbed some hula hoops along with black matte spray paint. Once I got home, I laid out the hoops and painted each one with the paint. I sprayed each hoop with several thin layers of paint. I allowed each layer to dry completely before turning the hoops over to spray the other side. I love the matte black because it gives them the look of wrought iron. Now to assemble the trellis. I took the hoops out to my garden and decided to attach them to my house using small poultry staples, which I hammered into the area between my wood siding. I then slipped a piece of pipe cleaner through the hole and attached the hoop, twisting the ends together. I designed my layout to fit the space by holding up each hoop and deciding where to attach it. Once the hoops were attached to the siding, I used black electrical tape to join the hoops together where they crossed over each other. Now to attach the plant. I chose a climbing rose named Lady Beard, which will continue to send out long stems. And in the spring, small white bunches of fragrant roses will fill the stems. To attach the plant, I carefully moved each stem, bundling some together and following the curve of the hoop. I love the look of my new trellis and it was so easy to make. It's lightweight, it's sturdy enough to hold the plant, and as the plant grows, I can simply add additional hoops. I hope this inspires you to build your own trellis today. Check out your local garden center and see what spring flowers are available. Shop your house for a woven basket. First, spray paint your basket in a moss green color. Once the basket is completely dry, take a can of clear spray adhesive and spray a small section on the side of the basket. Take clumps of green moss and press it onto the sticky side of the basket. Continue to press moss onto the sprayed area on the basket. You can manipulate your moss so it is a little thinner and covers more space on the basket. Continue until the base of the basket is covered. Don't worry if every spot is covered. The green basket color will disappear behind the different green shades of the moss. You will also want to spray the rim of the basket with clear adhesive and press the moss onto the basket rim edge. Have fun playing with the placement of the different shades of the moss. You don't need to glue moss to the inside of the basket. Instead, Take a clear plastic water tray and press it into the bottom of the basket so it is protected. Now grab some scissors and start to cut apart the different cells of the flower six pack. Start to place the individual plants into the moss covered basket and arrange them so any blooms or buds are facing outward. Fill in around the bottom of the plants with the moss so the plant cells disappear. Depending on your weather, place this moss-covered basket indoors or out and enjoy watching each bloom emerge as spring appears. Thanks for watching Home Talk. I'll see you next time.